And so now we move to step five of five. And again, I mean, I think the, the point of this for us is getting to a point at the end of these five steps that you feel strongly about um, the survey that you've created, that it's going to get the responses that, and the, the information and data that you need, but then also that the target population that you're aiming to survey is feeling like the survey allowed them the space and the opportunity to actually answer the questions in the way that represents their experiences. And that's something that I think, um, while this step um, is one I feel like often might get skipped by teams, is one that I think is the most important for that reason. So for those of you who might not be familiar with the term cognitive interviewing, um, depending on where you sit in the world or your past experiences, this is a, a technique that's often used in usability testing um, for products, uh, formative evaluation. It's a process by which you identify and correct problems with surveys that involves administering the survey to someone um, while you're sitting there watching them take it. And so when we do these um, processes, we encourage the people who are taking the survey in its draft form. So again, you've already gone through content experts. You've already potentially run it past your survey um, expert who might be on your core development team or in your stakeholder group. You might have already run it past those variety of stakeholders in step four. But what we've really seen is that until it sits with somebody who actually has not been a part of the process, has not seen it, doesn't know what question is coming next, um, you might not learn exactly how it, it works or it functions, um, whether it's paper-based or it is an online format. The attempt here with this methodology is really to improve a variety of factors. And for those, those for us are the clarity of the survey, the relevance of either the survey items, so are they speaking um, in the language to the people um, that make sense to the people who are taking it, the length and the flow. I, I think many of us have probably been on surveys before, you're like, is this over yet, right? Like, how many possible questions? Um, does the flow make sense? Like, oh, I thought I answered questions like that already. And so the idea is that by testing it out in this way and actually watching people in real time take the survey, you can um, identify some of these areas that are going to be potential pitfalls, right? So things that might um, add to uh, selection bias, right? So if somebody just decides that they give up, they, they open it and the instructions are so long they can't even read it, they just close the survey, right? So then you have a whole bunch of people who are not responding. Or you have items that are confusing to people and they're not seeing a response option. And so by that, they end up um, skipping items. And so then you might have numerous items that you actually need information um, in order to make decisions that half the people who took your survey have actually skipped or answered incorrectly. And so when we talk about cognitive interviewing, and I know there's, there's a question about it um, with piloting, I think it really depends on the survey that you're doing and how you're doing it. So for us, um, with the, the projects that we've been working on recently, cognitive interviewing has been a way for us to pilot or pretest. Um, for those of you who might be doing a, a larger survey or something that you'll want to be doing over time, um, you might want to then do a full-on pilot of the survey, but we really recommend doing this step prior to a full-on pilot of the survey if that's the, the path that you're going to go down. It really, the point of this is to find those pit pitfalls, those areas where people who are um, the target population who might, might be confused or not feel like the survey is actually speaking to them. 